Hello, this is Loopline. In this video I want to cover how to add new engines or definitions to the Vanity Name Checker add-on. So first you're going to go to add-ons and if you don't have it installed, show available add-ons, find the Vanity Name Checker and install it and or update it if it's not updated and once you have that done go to add-ons, go to Vanity Name Checker and launch the add-on. The Vanity Name Checker checks for if a vanity name is available, so like yourbusiness.tumblr.com or yourkeyword.tumblr.com or .weebly.com or .etsy.com, etc. You can go to the definitions file here and look at the different ones. I have a different video on how to use the vanity name checker, so I won't cover that in this video. I'll just link it in the description. In this video, I want to cover how to add new engine definitions. So basically, when you load the add-on, you can put URLs or keywords over here, and then it'll find if a particular one is available. To click definitions here, we can see the different ones that are already built in, and as you click on one, you can see different things that are set up over here. Live Journal is a great example because it has a general section, an available one and two, and a taken one, two, and three. So you can have multiple taken elements, multiple available elements, and general elements. So if this isn't making sense yet, go back and watch the video on how the vanity name checker works in the first place. If you click in the section here, it'll give you like a blank one and even a description for general section, the name is available, and then the name when taken. So let's just go add one. So I found one called Strikingly. And basically, um, I just did a search on uh, and monkeyed around here on Google and came up with a, a footprint that gets me some different ones that are available and taken, that sort of thing. So here's one. You can see the format. It is keyword.strikingly.com. And obviously, this one's available. And then if we go here, this one happens to be under construction, so that wouldn't be available either. This one has some uh, content on it. This one has temporarily owner disabled the site, so obviously it's not available. And then I made up a random one, scrapebox.strikingly.com, and page not found, so obviously it is available. Unless, for some reason, Strikingly has happened to ban this particular one. It would still say page not found but also wouldn't be available. That happens a lot with Tumblr and different ones. Um, and so let's go through here and just build it. So first of all, we're gonna go general, friendly name. I'm gonna call it Strikingly. And I'll go ahead and pause the video here and build some of this and then come back and show you what it is so you don't have to sit here while I type everything. So unpausing the video here, I went ahead and completed most of the general section. I went ahead and copied this into Notepad uh, so I could basically go back and forth. So I can kind of click on one of these and see what it is. I also just took a screen capture. That kind of helped me a little bit. Um, so I can look and see what these things are and then go into Notepad. And then I'm just going to, because if I start doing it and then click to look and see what something is, then it takes it away. Um, and it won't let me add it as a template until I meet certain criteria. So I'm just going to do it in Notepad pretty easy. Strikingly happens to be the friendly name, which is like what you see here. The requested name is basically where you take the website URL, which happens to be, so we did scrapebox.strikingly.com, and then you're going to put in the actual keyword here. So it'll be HTTP colon forward slash forward slash, and then KW in brackets there like that, and then dot strikingly.com. So that's basically this like this. And then the next thing to look at is the root, which is strikingly.com. We can see livejournal.com. So basically what I'm doing here to show you is click on one of the ones that are here and you can kind of model your data just like that. Pretty easy enabled. Enabled means whether or not it's ticked off here. Um, so you don't really have to worry about that. You can leave it as one. When I go down here to what is available and not available, so when it is not available, taken, I'm going to talk about that here in a minute and how to find it, but let's talk about um, when it's actually available here. So then moving down to available and taken, when it's available, we want it to say like page not found because basically if it's not taken, then that's when, when it's not already registered that's when it's actually available which may not make sense but if you think about it it does so first things first we can see here when something's available it has like a 404 error code which is going to be really common which is most likely what this is but I'm just going to copy this domain here and go to Google and do a header check search and come up here this is the one I always use um, just paste the domain in here and let's see what the status code is. This is a really easy way to do it. So this happens to be a 404 status code. So let's go over here and type in the result code of 404 when it is available because that'll look like this. And then the page must contain 
let's just do page not found and let's go back and look at our model data it shows title here unknown journal um, it also shows here page must contain an actual URL so let's do for instance um, I'm just gonna do page not found and put it in here and then must not contain so you don't want it to contain things like um, the owner has temporarily disabled the site or under construction because I don't know what those status codes will return but we can find out but if they return a 404 for example which they don't it's a 200 okay so that's fine um, page must not contain you don't have to put something there um, we can go over here if you find something that you need to exclude you can do that when it's taken you want a result code let's do probably 200 because we just saw that for this um, it is going to be a 200 for the site that's disabled obviously probably for one that's active we're going to come up with a 200 and that one's a 200 and then the one under construction here let's also look at that um, and that going to give me a 200 most likely as well it did and the way that I found all these pages I should probably go back I just went through Google like I said and I had built a um, I removed their blog from it and then I was just looking at their website and I just went through and clicked a bunch of these and um, you get different ones that come up so it's a good idea to click different ones and go through and find some ones that are working so and not working and all that sort of thing so must contain for when it's taken um, we don't have to put that there so going back to taken if we want to look at our model data again on live journal we can see that this one has a particular if it has a 404 but it says reserved in the title it's taken but you can see here here's one that's just a 200 code so we're probably going to leave that because a lot of them as you go through here is taken you can see 200 or if it happens to have something in there like see this is suspended so it might give a different 200 code but so we'll try it and basically what we're going to do is run through it a few times and when you do it then you'll come up with some pages and then you can look at them and say you know what I found some and they meet certain criteria and we can filter them out so let's just do it add as new and here we have strikingly so let's just type in some words um, here and I'll just scrape up some keywords right quick with scrape box and come right back so I scraped up a few keywords punched in a couple of generic keywords got some scraped keywords here a couple of generic keywords um, and you can do that to kind of test it. You can also put in some of your original URLs you were just working with. We can see the site we had that was under construction, the one that was disabled, and the one that was working. And so you want to test to see how it responds to those things. So let's just hit start here. And then you also have the option of enable in debugger mode. But this sort of goes back to um, the rest of the stuff goes back to the original how it works so we can see that the under construction one the disabled one which is one where the person had disabled it and the one where there was content are all listed as taken the trending is listed as available and then the couple here are listed as taken and car is listed as taken but the rest of these are wide open and I tested actually a bunch of other keywords um, and they were like all available um, all kinds of different things so it strikingly seems to be pretty wide open at the moment um, and so let's go ahead and export here. Let's export all of the available URLs and I'm just gonna call it available strikingly and then spelled that wrong, oh well. And I'm gonna export all of the taken URLs, taken, let's call it taken strike. Now let's go ahead and just open these up and look at a few of them. So I'm gonna pull in the available ones here and we're gonna look at the available from strikingly and I'm just gonna pop them all open in a browser here and just look at it and we can go through here and see every single one of them says page not found page not found all the way across the top so that worked now I'm gonna just close out of this and let's import our taken ones and look at those and pop those all open in a browser basically you're gonna kinda go through and look at them in a browser and eyeball them it's a lot like making footprints really um, and then we'll open these things up in a browser and look at those and see if they are all actually indeed taken so that one's open and that one's under construction that one's been taken and these are kind of funky websites too striking it looks like they just kind of threw it together here because I think this is actually pre built content here because it tells you what you can put in this section um, and basically I think this is just some pictures and a little bit of content and share key links with info boxes and people behind that sort of thing and then your most powerful call to action so this is a lot of like templated data that strikingly is provided which is pretty cool because um, it's all going to show up 
although I'm sure it'll be the same across to, um, all kinds of different pages, but it makes it look nice. If a user lands on it, you can put in a little work and it'll look nicer than it really is. Anyways, going back here, all of this is done. Those are all taken. So it looks like our basic template that we did is going to work. So if we want to go back in there and just look at this again so that you have it, and so we can see here everything we added is good to go and it worked as it should. Some of them as you go through you'll find oddities like with this where you might have a 404 um, but it's actually has a title here and it's taken. So you can look at it because you'll be like okay you'll get a list of ones that are available and you'll try to register and be like it won't let you register. Why isn't it let me register this one? So I go back and I look and I see it's actually a 404 but it has this in the title and then now I can filter that out. Some Or the same thing goes with available. Um, you'll find those along the way. So start simple and then test it and then eyeball the results in a browser and go back and add additional filters as need be. The only remaining thing is the actual icon for these things, which is just a cosmetic issue. It doesn't have any functional effect on the definition file, but it's really easy to do. Basically, you pick your thing. So we did, we trained strikingly. If you notice this icon here, that's what it is in the definition, but in ours, there isn't one. So all you have to do is update favicon and it will download the favicon and stick it in there and then we just update the selected definition and we have it and we are set for using strikingly built into the vanity name checker and that is how you can build in your own custom definitions and engines for the vanity name checker thanks for watching this scrape box video for more scrape box videos click the subscribe button on your screen or click the subscribe button down below